video I'm going to show you what you need to build your own sales, what I used and what you can use to draw up those sales with pen and paper and on Fusion 360. I hope this video is interesting for you. If so, let me know with a thumbs up. This angle right here now correlates to my sail jig. The sail making jig then needs to have this exact angle to match these two panels of the sail. Basic stuff you will need is this thing. It takes about, well, like 30 minutes to build, but I can use those to show you how it's done. Those pieces of paper represent the buttons of the sail, so you don't need to waste a piece of expensive sail material. These sails, as you have seen in the last video, are built like three or four days ago, and I will use those to represent what I have to show you and what, to have, what you have to look for. My English terminology in sail making is not the greatest, so I'm using what I know and I try to explain as good as possible with simple words. If you know any terms, let me know down in the comment section and I will try to include those uh, in next videos. I'm going to show you what a sail consists out of and what holds it to mast and boat. First of all, you have all the rigid parts. This right here is the boom for the jib. This sail in front of the main sail is the jib or foresail. This is the boom. This connects to the mast. And onto the boom goes also the main sheet. The sheets are used to control the sails. This right here, you can see different versions, sometimes on top of the boom, sometimes below the boom, is the kicker or the vang. Right here is the sail mounted with a little piece of string and pulled down with another piece of string. You can see right here, when I pull, it goes down. Same on the aft corner and same on the top corner. On the top corner, you also have to compensate the forces from the Cunningham, which pulls the sail down, with a halyard, which pulls the sail up. What you also notice is a black line in the middle of the sail. This is not the middle, I will call it the draft line. I can show you where it is and why it is, how it is. This line right here goes from the top to the bottom. This point right here on this line, which is vertical and also seen on the sail, you can see it right there, the black line with the marker, is my draft line. This is the deepest section of the sail. And it is not needed to sail fast, but it's really, really helpful to understand your sail that you just built and to understand where to put all your buttons together. Some reinforcement places. This top section is reinforced and these carbon stripes reinforce the sail. I have one down here as well. This is a little special one. The sail material usually is not defined so you can use whatever you find. In order to show you how one of these sails is made, I'm using these two pieces of paper. These represent two of these lines, or panels of the sail. These panels are stuck together with double-sided tape. You can see here in the middle. It is a little hard to see because it's clear, but I think you can get what I want to say. What you also see but probably can't read probably properly, is I have written some numbers down here. Numbers help me to design the sail and to get organized, so I don't cut twice and only measure once. That's a good thing I usually don't do. If you're here to know why the sail works and how the physics on a sail work, let me know down in the comment section below. I will go into that if you want, but not on this video. This video is purely on sail making. Now to the pure gold of sail making. I can show you what I built. This is especially interesting, I think for Dylan, who asked me why and how I made this. This piece got different terms. We in Germany call it basically turtle. It is made out of wood and it got a shape. A shape like a, like a foil or like an airplane wing. This is not super defined and some play around with this shape. 
I don't know how much it makes the difference. I think there are much more important steps than taking the right shape. What you have to consider though, you have to mark the highest point of your profile and maybe write down how the curve in front and afterwards changes. Below this part we need a solid base and I added those feet made out of wood and stuck on there with some CA glue. After you've chosen your base and your profile, this is the profile and this is the base, you have to decide for the material. I used some pretty thick plywood and also for the profile you need rather thick plywood because you want to screw afterwards inside here. But I understand what I just did. These top panels are bent over this profile. I used screws and started basically in the middle outwards to bend this profile around this curve. Then I also needed to add some screws down here so this don't start to bend up here. Same on the other side. What connects these both sides, which are completely identical, is the whole trick of the whole system. Wait for it. There's a hinge. With this hinge, you can open and close the angle in between both of the, these sections. This is pretty basic hinge material you can find on Harbor Freight or any other hardware store. I look from the other side, we can see the hinge down there. And what I have done is I have added a little metal plate and a little nut in here and a little turning screw with a long bolt or a threaded rod which goes right from here through there. So by turning this knob I can adjust my angle in between both of these sections. An angle in between. You can also see there's a gap up here. And by twisting this wheel this gap slowly opens by pushing against the metal plate. If that is really helpful, you decide. The simple way is just to use some pieces of wood or some wedges to keep this up. Now on to the point why you need this. A sail is made out of flat panels. These flat panels get a curve to each other by bending the glue area. As you can see, this sail is curved so from left to right and here is how that is done and what it does. These two pieces of paper now show basically this piece of the sail and the next piece of the sail. I added some angle. How much angle is needed is shown in a drawing that I can show you later in this video. No kinks where you glue and no kinks from top to bottom. Now I will show you how to do that. Here's my double sided tape and when I pull this tape really strong to get it really sharp and really straight over my part you will see I have pulled this tape really strong, laid it flat on the table and you can see there are already wrinkles. You can see a wrinkle right there, a wrinkle right there and right there. You really do not want that. So instead what you want to do is first secure your piece of paper or your piece of sail material without too much tension to your table. I'm using just simple painter's tape. Where and how this pattern is placed on the stencil or on the template is really important and why and how you place this right there, how it is, is shown later in this video. So stick around or jump to this section when you know what's already coming. 
Now, instead of pulling your tape really tightly, you want to gently lay it without any tension onto your surface. And then just press down without pulling from left to right this tape gently to your sail material. This really ensures a tension-free joint between two panels. In order to join these two panels, it is obvious that you need to overlap them completely on top over my double-sided tape. Here in the middle, outside here, we have a 3 or 4 millimeter gap. This gap is defined by how much you angle up or angle open your turtle. Now, to glue these parts together, it is really important to fix your sail, but in a way that you can fold back the top area for bonding. I'm removing this tape and then gently, really so gently, press from the middle outward onto my double-sided tape. You can see this is still flying right there. I'm just pushing and pressing. So what I've created with this simple method is a not straight edge for double-sided tape which connects two pieces of sail material to each other. Now let's remove the tape and see what happened. Let's repeat. We just placed two flat sail material panels onto our mold, onto our turtle, fixed those panels with some painter's tape and then used double-sided tape to connect both of these sail panels. And this is what you get. A panel that is not straight anymore. I won't be able to lay this flat on the table. You can see it got a shape of my sail. It's exactly the right shape, exactly the same shape as my sail here flat on the table. And now I will show you how to do this with a piece of paper and a pen and with Fusion 360. This is our boat. Let's pretend this is 500 millimeters long, so we build the biggest sail that we can get and our draft is at 30 percent. So that means that we are at 166 from the front on the mast to the draft line. What I am running currently and I think what is typical is around about 40 percent which sets around about here. You can play around with this in like 10 degrees I'd say. I don't know if that works. Please let me know in the comment section. Everyone who built some sails and wants some regattas with it let, I'm curious what your angle is. Let's look a little closer to the sail and how we think it should look like. We got to find our mast length. This is shown on your boat. In my case, around about 1300 millimeters. We also have our boom length. Let's say like 500 millimeters. And this is 1300. We have now a rough outside dimensions of the sail. Here we have a right angle. This is the length and this is the length. And we can measure from here to here. Everywhere we want to, to get the leash curve. This curve around here. If you want a sail which is completely triagonal, that's also the same. And if you want a proper sail, which is nearly square topped like that, like the actual America's Cup sailboats, it's also the same. You have the dimension from here to here, from here to here. Let's turn this boat around. Let's view from, from the back side. We can do this with my sail that I just made. The next important step is to find the depth of the sail. It, on top it's a little shallow and down here it's really deep. As you can see from behind we can have this point right here 
where the edge meets goes all the way to the top. Not as much. This is the deepest section of the sail down here. So by connecting all these points that we decided we want to be the depth of the sail, we can define this curve. Now, if we look closely, this is round and this is round and everything is round. But these sail panels, they are flat. They are completely flat. And therefore, we connect them with straight lines. So we start here, straight line to there, straight line to here. Just like that. And we can check this angle with a stencil or with a angle finder or whatever. You can even build something out of some welding wire or something like that. Let's stick with what we got. This is the angle that we need for our turtle because this is the angle that is needed in between the first and the second panel of our sail. As you can see, this kinks like that and this is flat like that. And this is exactly what happens right here. This kinks like this, this is flat like that. Probably a little more. On our drawing, we have this angle. So this angle should match. We have our angle right here and I can place this on top of here and turn my twisting knob the right way around until my angle and the gap between these two panels match. I have cheated a little bit. I can't adjust my jig as much as I want to have my sail bend. So we are now shy of like four or five degrees. But that's how it is. This is the reality of sail making. This is the reality of model building. You always have to do a compromise. Now that we have defined this angle, we need to define where the deepest section of our sail is. Let's pretend this is 500 millimeters long and we want this on around about a third of the length. Let's repeat this for the next pattern. We have also our percent, 40%, 35, 30 and 0. Now. How do I get this point? This point is also the length, also the length, also the length from here to here, and then our percent. In front of the mainsail, we have the jib. So the jib usually means that we can go with our draft a few percent further backwards, and the top without the jib is a little further forward. How exactly this works and why I chose this is topic for another video. And now, and now let's make a sail. Let's start with a fresh piece of paper. Pretend that we added nothing. Ah, we can turn around. Let's pretend this is our sail height from here to here. So these right here and this right here is this dimension. This on top is for bonding. These 10 millimeters are here. Then we have our draft 166. Let's say that's around about here. On the top it should be 158. So 158 on this line from here could be around about there. To the end of the sail, mark what we need. Mark what we need. So the rest of 166 should appear here and this together is 500. And the same from here, 158 to whatever's left to this point is this length. And here we have our first piece of sail material. And now we need to align this with this draft line to our highest point of our sail jig. 
I fucked up three times. I still don't know what my highest point is. I have to be honest. And that's how it is. Now, let's align this right here, as perfect as it can get. And on top of here. So, what you can see right now is this is not perfectly straight. I have to be fair. I am not sure if that is important or if we need to align it. So, this is parallel to the gap. Both methods seem, seem to work. The last sale I made is made this way. I was always just aligning the top section with my first line, like that. This is where the line is. You can't see it right now, but with the transparent cell material, it worked out. And then, this is flat against this edge. And here's everything prepped up and ready for bonding. My first lower part of the sail, we said 166 down here, 158 down there, and here we have 15, oh, 158 up here, and the rest on top. Fix it on here, so we can fold it up, remove the double-sided tape, and stick it down together. And that's how you make a sail. After sticking these panels together, and yes, I fucked up, I ripped right here, and I got a wrinkle right there, because I rushed, because it is close to midnight. Um, you can use this panel, lay it flat on the table, and then cut all around to all your parts where your sail is supposed to be. And then use some tape, spinnaker tape or something like that, and make these reinforcements. And you can see right here. And then I used a soldering iron and get a pretty good hole to stick my sheets through. That's on to the part for Fusion 360. As you can see, I have no idea how to screen record, so this is what we will do now. At first, let's close this, and now let's have a look at what I have drawn up. This is the sail, exactly in the correct dimensions for my Mini 40. The sail went perfectly, and it's got a beautiful, beautiful shape. These are the dimensions. I used my boom as a reference and my mast as a reference and the angle between mast and boom. And also the same for the jib. Let's get a little closer. My total distance is combined out of 297 and 194 millimeters. This is the total length that I can use between the mast and the tip of the boom. This point right here, on this line, which is vertical and also seen on the sail, you can see it right there, the sh black line with the marker, is my draft line. This is the deepest section of the sail. And now let's go into sketch mode. What you can see right here is this dimension is D230. This is this dimension in total, 466545 times 0 0.4. This gives me 40% of the total distance of this length to this point. So I'm using this point as a reference to connect all these points to get my vertical line at around about 40% of the total chord length. So my draft is 40% from the forward end of the mast. This repeats to all the other ones. When we go further to the top, changes to 0 0.37. So this is 37% from the total length of the sail is the deepest draft point. This is because the jib is not longer affecting the main sail on this top section. And then I drew up this complete length of my mast and used these points to connect and get the angles in between these two surfaces. This angle right here now correlates to my sail jig. The sail making jig then needs to have this exact angle to match these two panels of the sail. So this kinks onto here and then 
with the kink further on to here. The angle in between these two panels should be exactly this angle that I can adjust with this sail making jig to be perfect. To check that I'm using just an angle finder. This angle on top should be 165.4 degrees on my sail in this situation. After drawing up on Fusion 360, you can translate that onto your sail panels and put these sail panels with a little piece of double-sided tape. I hope you can see that. It is this stuff right here. Onto your sail making jig, as I have done. This is then fixed with some tape, aligned with the middle section and then used the tape to connect these two buttons. And this is supposed to fit perfectly flat into the sail. Use a little easter egg for someone who watches this video until the end. I managed to change my rudder system to something a little different and I reinforced with some epoxy the joint between the vertical and the horizontal. This needs now sanding. This is just epoxy with some cotton fibers and some thixotropic powder. As you can see, I have also a, another bearing surface point uh, right here. And onto the catamaran. This looks completely different as well. But more on that later. This is just a sneak peek.